What I'd like to talk about with you today is a fairly simple alternator. It's an alternator made up of a cylindrical magnet that looks um, something like this. You know, we have a cylinder here, and that magnet is going to rotate around this axis here and have a cross polarization. It's cross magnetized so that the magnetization is always perpendicular to the axis. Um, then this is going to rotate around here at, in sort of with an angular speed of omega. Um, and to turn this magnetization, this rotating magnet, into some sort of useful current, we're going to put a um, square or rectangular, excuse me, um, wire loop around here, coming along like this, and um, that will go out into the world and give us power. So this wire I want to be just touching this cylinder. It's just hard to draw that way without making it look like two little wires are coming out of the cylinder. So that guy is going to be the same length L as the cylinder and have um, a width of uh, twice the radius. So this is the radius from here to here of the cylinder. So now in the end we want to get some EMF out of this. Uh, but the first thing we'd probably like to do is um, just sort of list what we know, all right? Always want to list what we know. So uh, I like to call those the givens because I spent too much time in math classes when I was an undergraduate. Um, and what am I given? I'm given a rotating uh, magnetic cylinder. It's a permanent magnet. Um, it's one of these ideal permanent magnets that we're using in class. Uh, so it has a magnetization M, right? Uh, it has a um, width uh, two R, twice the radius. I should have used radius, but we'll be happy with that. And it has a length L, and it has an angular speed omega. We've already sort of put all those down already, but now we have a nice convenient list. And we know what we want to find. We want to find um, the voltage induced or the electromotive force. electromotive force, which is a nice script E like that. It's a little bit too much of a tail, but I think you'll live with it. Okay, so we need a little bit more um, information about how we're going to work this. So let's talk about the setup for our representation. So this is our representation up here, if, as you'll recall, for you know putting your homework together. This is the ID part. This is the setup part. And the setup part is uh, first what sort of coordinate system we're going to use. There's no real symmetry here. Um, the cylindrical symmetry is broken by the, by the fact that this, is, this points tangentially and it rotates around. So uh, we'll have to use Cartesian coordinates. All right. Um, I guess we'll have the um, rotation axis, the y-axis. That means that the angular velocity is the angular speed times the y-axis. The angular um, the angular speed, the angular velocity go is in the direction that it's that the um, thing is turning, right? And then we'll have to say that the um, 
current loop or the loop uh, is pointed um, in the y direction so that its normal is equal to the x hat direction. So that's our setup. All we need now is a strategy. Once we have a strategy, we can solve everything and be happy and go on our merry way. So what sort of things are we going to need here? We're going to need um, one, we're going to need to write an expression for m. So we need m, the magnetization, a uh, vector quantity as the function of time. Uh, two, we'll have to find um, b. We'll need to know the magnetic field and we'll get that from mu naught h plus m. Okay. Then we'll need to get the flux out of that. So we need to find the flux that's going through this loop. And that's going to be um, phi is equal to uh, the double integral of b dot dA. And I'm sort of missing here. Let's push this up. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's just get this 4 in there for fun and profit. Um, we want to find the electromotive force, which is just um, the derivative of the flux with respect to time. So that's more or less what we're going to need to do. Um, so how we're going to do this. One, we want to write a formula for the magnetization or a um, expression for the magnetization. Um, the magnetization is uniform, let's say. We have a nice ideal magnet, so we've always kept our magnetizations uniform for that purpose. So that's M. Uh, and we need to express its direction. So it's rotating around in, in sort of this uh, in this configuration, say starting in the z direction, then going to the x direction, then minus z, then plus x. So uh, that means that we'll have a sine omega t in our um, x hat direction and a cosine omega t in our y hat direction. Okay. Um, then we can use that to find the magnetic field B. So B, remember, is equal to the permeability of free space times the H field, which is basically the field from everything else in the world except our magnet, plus the magnetization of the magnet. Um, right now we're looking at this in isolation, so the H field is zero. So B is just going to be mu naught M. And we've already got a nice expression for that right there. So let's go ahead and just say that B is equal to mu naught um, M times uh, sine omega T in the X hat direction. Uh, excuse me, this was supposed to be in the Z hat direction. Uh, plus cosine omega T in the z-hat direction. Okay. So now we want to find the flux. So in this case, um, we have a uniform B inside of this inside of this wire. And so um, because B is uniform, this B dot dA is becomes uh, b dot the integral b dot the uh, integral uh, times dA and that's just the directed area which is equal to b dot the area of the loop uh, from here to here uh, times the direction of its normal component which is in the x hat direction okay 
All right, and now the area is just going to be 2R times L, 2R times L, and B is just this thing here. So we can just follow up and say we've got mu naught um, times M times uh, 2R uh, times L. And then we have um, we have the dot product of x hat with sine omega t x hat and cosine omega t z hat. So we have sine omega t because x hat and z hat are mutually per perpendicular, and these are both in the same direction and they're unit vectors, so everything's hunky dory. All right, so finally we're just about there to find our electromotive force, script E. We just take our derivative with respect to time of this phi. And so I can just write that all out for fun, but probably not for profit. Um, mu naught m to l, this is still kind of stinky. Um, sine omega t. Uh, that ends up being equal to, um, we can bring all this other stuff out, so 2 mu naught um, l times r. There should be an r in here. Uh, times m times derivative of sine omega t with respect to t, which is omega cosine omega t. And that right there is what we were looking for. Thank you.